Open your Bibles to the book of Genesis chapter 9. Thank God for Calvary. I preached a version of this message in the year 2005 here at our church. If you were here then, you won't remember it. So uh, it'll be new to you all over again. I do not know why, but all this past week, this message has been impressed upon my heart. It might have been because of Hurricane Matthew that hit our coast, hit Florida, and done all of the other destructions and so forth. But there was a time on this earth when God opened up the windows of heaven and opened up all the fountains beneath, and this world was completely covered in water. Every living thing perished in that flood. That is everything except Noah, his wife, his sons, and their wives. Eight people survived that flood. Today we don't hear about survivals. We hear about the casualties that come. But in that day and time, all of them were casualties except those eight people. God looked down upon the earth and saw that man's imagination and his heart was evil continually. That's not the reason God made man. God made man to glorify him and to honor his creator. So God sent a flood upon this earth. And after God saw the destruction that it caused and the loss of life that he caused, that it caused, he said, I'll never do that again. We pick up in verse 12, Genesis chapter 9. We're going to read about one of the most beautiful things that can ever be viewed by the eyes of man. And that's a rainbow. Man cannot paint the beauty that there is in the rainbow. We have come a long ways with our technology and our coloring and things like that. I never dreamed that I'd see a time when adult coloring books would come back on the scene. But they're here this day and time with advanced pencils rather than than the old crayons that we used to use and sometimes we used to eat. Yeah, don't tell me you've never eat crayons. You hadn't lived unless you have. But anyway, uh, we've come a long ways, but you cannot duplicate the beauty that there is in a rainbow. Let's read about it in verse 12 of Genesis 9. And God said, This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud. It shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. God said unto Noah, This is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. 
There are three things that God put in the clouds or in the sky to remind us of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, when the children of Israel were led by Moses out of the land of bondage, out of Egypt, God put in the sky a cloud to guide them by day, and that cloud that guided them by the day turned into a pillar of fire that guided them by night. Sometimes that cloud was over the children of Israel to shadow them from the desert sun. Sometimes that cloud went before the children of Israel to guide them in the direction that they were to go while in the wilderness. Sometimes that cloud moved behind the children of Israel to protect them from Pharaoh's army that was in hot pursuit. Nighttime, that cloud of pillar turned into a pillar of fire to warm them from the desert cold that they were going through. Also to give them light as they traveled uh, through that wilderness. So God put those things in the sky and those things remind us of the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everywhere that the children of Israel looked, there was either a cloud or there was a pillar of fire that reminded them that the Lord was still with them in their journey through the wilderness. Aren't you glad that God still is a present God this day and time? I'm glad that God is above his people. I'm glad that God is in front of his people. I'm glad that God is behind his people. But more than that, I'm glad that God is in his people to lead them and to guide them. The second thing that God put in the sky was a star over the manger. And that star represents not just the presence of the Lord, but the preeminence of the Lord Jesus. If you will notice that the wise men in the Bible were guided by the star from the east where they were at, and that was hundreds of miles away. As a matter of fact, it took their journey so long Now, I know that in Christmas time we do things a little bit different when you see the manger scenes and so forth and we see the wise men bringing their gifts to the baby Jesus as he lay in the manger. But that's not accurate. For Jesus had been moved from the manger into a house. So it took a good while for the wise men guided by that star to come to the place where they could worship and give their gifts unto the Lord Jesus Christ. That star in the sky was so bright that it spoke to the hearts of the shepherds that were keeping watch over their flock out on the hillside at nighttime. And that star guided them to the place where the baby Jesus lay. God put that star, the brightest star that had ever shone in the heavens to remind us of the preeminence of the Lord Jesus Christ. None higher, none brighter, none greater than the Lord Jesus Christ. The third thing in the Bible that God put in the sky was the rainbow. Here it is called a bow in the cloud none other than a rainbow. And that rainbow represents to us a covenant that God made between himself and mankind. Man did not make the covenant. God made the covenant. Every time you read about the rainbow in the Bible, it states me and you and God speaking. And God is the me. Man did not make the rainbow. God made the rainbow. And God put the rainbow in the clouds to remind us of a promise or a covenant that he made 
between the human beings on this earth that he would no more destroy the world by water. But everything about that rainbow is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything about the rainbow is a picture of our Savior. Even the colors of that rainbow uh, remind us of Jesus Christ. They're basically the same colors in a rainbow. There is what is called an inverted rainbow. That is that the colors are reversed. Have you ever saw a double rainbow? Sure you have. But the colors in that second rainbow are not as bright as the first one and all the colors are reversed. But in the original rainbow, here's the colors. Purple is always at the top. Purple in the Bible was reserved for rich people and people in power and kings and princes and so forth wore purple. Do you remember Luke chapter 16? I believe it's verse 19. The Bible says that there was a rich man that fared sumptuously every day and was dressed in purple and fine linen. Do you remember when Jesus was uh, brought before the Sanhedrin court to answer all the false charges that were against him and to listen to the lies of the false witnesses? They took his robe off him and put on him a scarlet or a purple robe. Purple in the Bible was reserved for the rich and reserved for those in authority and those in power. But in that rainbow, the purple color reminds us of the greatest king that ever lived and he's the king of kings and lord of lords and that purple represents the Lord Jesus Christ. And then there is the color blue. Blue is the color of the glory world, the color of the heavens. We look up today and we see the heavens are in blue. It's a reminder that Jesus Christ came from heaven. You see, Jesus is not a product of man. Jesus is a product of the glory world, of heaven itself. I know that he was born of a virgin but he didn't have an earthly father. The Bible tells us that the Holy Ghost overshadowed the Virgin Mary and planted within her the seed called the Lord Jesus Christ. I know that Jesus was born in the world, but he's not of this world. He's a product of a place called heaven. Amen. Then there is the color green. Green in the Bible is a picture of everlasting life. It is a picture of new life. It is a picture of eternal life. And aren't you glad that when you got saved, God promised you that there never would be a time when you were dead, that you'd live forever and ever and ever. This old body might die, but the soul and spirit lives forever with the Lord Jesus Christ. Then there is the color yellow. That's the color of the sun. S-U-N. The sun is the light of this world. But aren't you glad that there's another light that stepped out of heaven and come into this world? And Jesus himself said, I am the light of the world. And when a Christian gets saved, he becomes that radiant light that's in this old world of ours. So yellow is a picture of the light of the world. And then there is the color orange that follows the color yellow. That is the color of caution. The caution lights are all yellow, or all orange rather. And it warns us and reminds us that unless we repent of our sins, we perish in our sins and our home is in a place called hell. I'm glad that God put 
a caution in the rainbow when he set it in the clouds. And then there is the color red. And you know what the color red represents? It represents the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that cleanses us from all of our sins. And it's the only cleansing agent that gets rid of our sins, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not your good works or my good works. It's not our talents. It's the blood of the Lord Jesus that cleanses us from all of our sins. The colors of the rainbow are pictures of the Lord Jesus Christ. It takes two things to make a rainbow. It takes a storm and it takes a sunshine. You will never see a rainbow unless you see it after the storm has passed and the sun begins to shine again. Now I know that scientific scientific people have put together a a formula that... uh, they say produces a rainbow and it's how the sun shines on droplets of water. Listen, there'd be no rainbow if it were not for the creator who created the first rainbow. And it it must be a storm. There's got to be a disturbance in the heavens before there will ever be a rainbow. But that rainbow that comes after the storm, I say again, is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. There was a disturbance in the heavens in Noah's day that produced the flood and later God put the rainbow, but there was a disturbance in heaven when God sent his son into this old world to die for your sins and my sins. And yet he came. Aren't you glad? And the Lord Jesus become our rainbow redeemer. I noticed something else in this story about the rainbow. Nowhere in the Bible does it ever say that Noah asked for a rainbow. He had never seen one. He didn't know what one was. He never dreamed of a thing called a rainbow. He didn't know anything, never even heard about a rainbow. That was all God's idea. Can I tell you that when Jesus stepped out of heaven and came into this old world to die for your sins, man wasn't looking for a redeemer. Man didn't know anything about a redeemer. Man never heard of a redeemer, but our rainbow redeemer went to Calvary and died for you and I, and God did through his son what man never dreamed that God would do. Two river boats were passing on the Mississippi River. If you've ever been there, I was talking to one of our members this past week, and he said, I've never been to the Mississippi River. And Charlotte and I have a couple of times on a mission trip that we took to the Ozark Mountains and we crossed uh, that big river. It's a very swift river. These two uh, boats were passing and uh, a young man had uh, just signed on to one of the boats and uh, he was kind of green at what he was doing and wasn't as cautious as he should have been and somehow he got tangled up in the ropes and fell overboard in that swift water. He could not fight the strength of that river very long. It looked like surely he was going to die. But the captain of another ship on the other side saw him fall overboard and came to where he was at. Every time those boats passed on the Mississippi River, that young man on the back of that boat jumped up and down and hollered, that's him, that's him, that's him. Somebody asked him one day what he was doing all the yelling about. Who is that? 
He said, that's the man that came to me when I was drowning, when I could not help myself. He came to where I was at and thank God rescued me. And that's exactly what Jesus did. When we were drowning in our sins, he made his way from heaven and died on an old rugged cross. And I want the world to know that's him, that's him, that's him. We cannot praise him enough for what he's done. Thank God for my rainbow redeemer. There's another thing about that rainbow. Man cannot destroy a rainbow. He may not look at it. He may even curse it when he sees it. He might even deny that it's up there. He might say it's something else. But I tell you what, he can't climb up into the sky and take that rainbow out of heaven. And I'm gonna tell you right now, man cannot, uh, he didn't invent it, and man cannot destroy the rainbow. Somebody asked me a while back, said, have you made Jesus Lord yet? No, and you haven't either. Jesus beat, uh, God beat us to that a long time ago. For in Philippians he said that God hath made this same Jesus both Lord and Christ. God made him Lord before you and I ever thought about him being Lord. And man cannot bring that Lord down. They're trying to every way that we turn this day and time. They're trying to get rid of Jesus. But as long as God has one saved person in this world... This world is going to know about Jesus. They can't climb up into heaven and take him off his throne. They may deny he's king. They may deny he's savior. They may even curse his name, but they can't destroy him. God set him up like that, and that's how he's going to stay. Another thing about the rainbow. When you see a rainbow... You see it like everybody else sees it. It might be interesting for you to know that there's no such thing as an American rainbow, an Egyptian rainbow, or a Russian rainbow. No, they're all the same. There's no such thing as a Methodist rainbow and a Baptist rainbow and a Presbyterian rainbow, or a Church of God rainbow. No, all rainbows are the same. Amen. Y'all agree with that? It's a heavenly thing. You might be in the mountains when you see it. You might be in the valley when you see it. You might be in the plains when you see it. But when you see a rainbow, you see it like everybody else sees it. Hmm. When the Holy Ghost of God reveals to you the Lord Jesus, you'll see him like everybody else sees him. Let me say it again. There's no such thing as a Methodist Jesus or a Baptist Jesus. Amen? He's all the same to every person. It don't make any difference when you see him. If you do see him, you'll see him as everybody else sees him. That means that if you get saved, you'll get saved like everybody else got saved. You may not have shown the emotions that some others do. You may not have even cried a tear when you got saved. Or you may have weeped a bucket full. But if you got saved, you got saved just like everybody else gets saved. Amen. Just one way, one Savior. I'll never forget. I was in the mountains of North Carolina. When I first saw him as he really is. And on that Easter Sunday morning, 
the Holy Ghost of God revealed to me who Jesus really was. Holy, holy, holy. The divine Son of God. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever, forever person. And that day I gave my heart and life to the Lord Jesus. What a day it was. Another thing about the rainbow is it appears in the heavens and the center of that rainbow is way up in the heavens but its arches reach down to the earth. You ever heard the old story that there's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow? Now whoever got you to believe that will lie you about other things too. Amen. There's no such thing as gold at the end of the rainbow. I've passed through rainbows. You have too. But the center of it is up in heaven and it reaches down to the earth on both sides. That's a picture of Jesus. Aren't you glad that there is somebody who sits high in the heavens that has arms and hands long enough to reach down to earth and get hold of man and get hold of the hand of God at the same time and bring them both together at a place called Calvary. I say hallelujah. <coughs> For the rainbow. <clears throat> Amen. Man might take away a lot of things you have. But if you're saved, you've got something man cannot touch. Sears might get your refrigerator. The bank might get your car or your house. But I got something way down in here that nobody can ever take away from me and that's God's plan of salvation because he reached down from heaven when I could not reach up and got my hand and wash my sins away at a place called Calvary. He's my rainbow redeemer. In closing, one more thing about the rainbow. Mankind on this earth has never seen a complete rainbow. You only see half of a rainbow at the most. Years ago, there was a bad storm in outer space and the astronauts were above the storm. One of the astronauts took a picture. Now I've got that picture at the house somewhere. I tried to find it and I couldn't. But he took a picture of that gigantic storm that was right above the earth and there was a complete rainbow that circled the earth after that storm was over with. But standing here on this earth, you don't see a complete rainbow, you see a half of a rainbow. Revelation chapter 4 tells us that there's coming a time when we'll see a complete rainbow. Revelation chapter 4 verse 1. The church has been raptured and they're in heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ. And one of the first things that John said he saw was a rainbow, complete rainbow around about the throne of God. That rainbow was there to let us know that Jesus kept his promise to this old world and he kept his promise to you and I that are saved that he never leave us nor forsake us and when we get to heaven we'll see that complete rainbow round about the throne of God what a day that's going to be let's stand across the building